of night, peering through the veil of darkness, the paranormal, spiritual, and comedic abound. Welcome to the Richard Spazoff Show. This is the Richard Spazoff Show, brought to you by Audible. You can find it on our website at the Psychic Medium Spassoff Show.com. Also, the Richard Spassoff Show podcast is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts available for Android and coming soon iDevices. To get all of the great stuff from the Richard Spassoff Show and more, check out the HC Universal Network. I'd like to thank TalkStream Live for bringing us aboard their website. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Bill, very much. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Before we get to the show... Here's a little comedy skit that, uh, well, my girlfriend, Gloria Grady, and myself did. Did I do it? Yeah, I think I did. Oh, here it is. No, you don't want to spend time in a mental hospital. It's not good. Tell me what it's like. Tell you what it's like? Yeah. First of all, you got to ask me, why was I there? Why were you there? And then you would ask, what was it like? And what was it like? Okay. Jeez. Many a times. <laughs> we turn the clock back now. Ouch, my teeth. Tell people that. Go ahead. Turn the clock back. And we all do stupid things. One time I put a gun in my head. Well, trying to kill yourself at 21 years old, that's enough to put you in the mental hospital. But once you're there, you get all your rights taken away. I mean, they don't allow you to do too much. You get your shoelaces taken away. They put you in a pair of blue slippers. I mean, if you're going to go out and dance, you can't do it at the time you want to. For an example, (laughs) the psychiatrist I had was real good. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> Real nice psychiatrist. Ah. Forgot his name. Oh, I did it again. See. <laughs> okay, this is to say his name is David. Anyways, he. <laughs> ah, here we go again. <laughs> what about David? You keep making me laugh, and I hit my teeth on the mic. Oh. I can't help it. Anyways, okay, so David said, (sighs) (laughs) doesn't the Yanni make you relax, folks? (laughs) I've been relaxed all day. Okay, so on the nutty side, let me explain you something. Let me explain you. Am I speaking English or foreign tongue? Children say, let me explain you. That's okay. I'm not a children. I mean, I, I, I don't even know what I am. I mean, it's the 50th time that I've taken English in school. So, I mean, I would have, would have graduated sooner if it wasn't for that part-time job at the brothel. But, hey, you do what you have to do, right? Richard. What? We're back to Bellevue. Okay, let's go back to Bellevue. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm this glad wasn't you're Bellevue. getting a kick out of yourself. <laughs> I hope other people are. This wasn't Bellevue, but it was a mental hospital. Bottom line, when you do stupid stuff to yourself or try to hurt yourself, you'll be put into one. And in fact, I was stripped naked in a mm. sense. Yeah, you would have liked it. 
They took away my <laughs> shoelaces. They took away everything in my pockets. They took away my straight jacket. They don't even let you keep it. But my roommate, get this, my roommate at the time uh, next to me was Prinell Roberts. Oh, really? Yeah, it was cool to see him. I he was so nice. Who it is. But not the way they brought him in. They brought they brought us both in in body bags because too much stress. I can't remember who he is. Uh, Adam Cartwright. He's gone now. Oh. He was well, such a sweet man. I don't know why he was there, but he was in the other uh, cell, let's say. And I was in one cell by myself. And these are like a room, and they have glass, and you can see the other people. In this case, I saw him in the other room. The only thing I saw was he looked at me and smiled. And when I saw him smile, I could tell that he had a lot of love in his heart. He was very kind. But bottom line, it took me two days to get out of there to learn that that's not the way to go. It's you must have been the handsomest two patients they ever had. <laughs> I think so. Wow. <laughs> I did it again. See what you do to me? This guy keeps bumping his tooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one mistake, though, is never ask your psychiatrist if you could go out and dance. You need to pass. If you're in a mental hospital and you want to go out and dance, this was a nice place where we, where we went to dance. And I asked a psychologist if I could get a, a, a nighttime pass to go out to dance. He goes, okay. Really? Yeah. And he said, do you want to bring anybody with you? Really? Yes. And I said, well, who do you have in mind? Well, there's people here that you might want to go with. I said, yes. I go, there's a few people I'd like to bring with me to La Costa Resort. Well, little did La Costa Resort know that we were going to bring some mental patients. The women there must have been thrilled and waiting for you. <laughs> I don't know if they were thrilled, sweetheart, but the poor women that we brought with us um, eventually did not do well. Let's just say that. I don't want to make this a sad story, but it did not go well. But that night that we went out, it was the first time in her life that she had a chance to go out. First you said they, now you're saying her, she. Her. Her. And one other person. An yeah, another they. male. Yeah, three, three of us went. And what happened? Uh, well, we went out and danced. We had fun. We talked to people. We came back, and, and we uh, committed ourselves to the rest of the weekend. And what was wrong with the girl? Uh, well, this is the sad part. For many years, that poor girl was locked up in like a chicken cage for many years. By her parents? By somebody that she lived with, yeah. Yeah, for many years. That is She sad. never really saw too much daylight. She was locked up in a cage, and it was very sad. I hope they did something with the person that did that to her. I'm sure they spent time in jail because she, mentally, she could not cope with the world the way it was. I mean, who could with that kind of situation? So next week, we're going to spend some time at the mental hospital, me and you, and I got a nice romantic dinner for us. Yay, for my birthday. Yes. I'm 39 <laughs> again. <laughs> well, thanks so much for cheering us up, Richard. That's, I'm sure people will just get a real kick out of that story. And um, thanks again. No, no. The bottom line <sighs> of this story is straighten yourself up. Don't put yourself into a mental hospital, for one thing. And pray for those kind of people. I mean, it's not a nice place. But uh, when you're going through a hard time, you do what you can do, right? That's right. And thanks again for cheering us up. <laughs> you're welcome. So happy. Just and call I'm me so, Mr. It's, happy. It's so much fun watching you bump your tooth over and over and over on the mic. Ah, <laughs> you're cool. Ah. Welcome to the Richard Spassoff Show. I have a wonderful guest in store. I hope I don't blotch her name, but Patty Negri. Did I say Perfect. that right? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. 
Oh, boy. Now, you're a psychic medium and a good witch. You're known as that, yes. correct? Yes, I am. That's cool. <laughs> it, it is. I'd be nice just kind of born this way, so I will accept the title. <laughs> and I like good witch better than white witch, because good means so many more things. <laughs> <laughs> it's I like it sounds like bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, good. You're very good, but... <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do Howard Stern right now or continue on, but we'll find out, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, with with that said, you said you so your mom and dad they were with witches as well, or explain? No, no, not at all. Actually, okay. I was just a normal suburban upbringing. I just knew when I was like a toddler, as far back as I can remember, that the imaginary friends little kids have were not all imaginary. They were the beings I could talk to and get real information with. I would find myself in the backyard picking rosemary and kind of knowing the properties of it and what to do with it. I literally did my first seance when I was seven or eight years old, always kind of obsessed with death, but not in a scary way. Right. I mean, there was a scary ghost and there was a not scary ghost. <laughs> I you know, got my little you know, hallway, my little suburban house hallway, and did a seance girlfriend, Terry Jones, and realized I didn't know dead people, so I'm like, oh, Marilyn Monroe and John Kennedy, they're dead. I will <laughs> conquer them. And um, don't think I really did, but my windowless, lightless hallway filled with lights and orbs, and, and thus it began. <laughs> That's cool. I was little. I always talked to goes to, and... I chewed on these little sour plants that uh, probably messed me up for the rest of my life. They weren't mushrooms, <laughs> wow, though. They were <laughs> like little four-leaf clover, and they had a real sour taste. I lived in Northridge, and uh, uh, that was just, I mean, I had a life that like, you wouldn't believe. Wow. Um, that's amazing. Did you ever figure out what the plants were that you chewed on? <laughs> no, I just like to chew on them. <laughs> if I had any common sense, I would have looked, looked it up. But at the time, uh, I was going through, prior to the plant thing, I was going through a lot of health issues. And and mm. uh, um, with my luck, it was probably a form of LSD, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you never Whatever, know. It worked. You're still here. You know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, what? Now, since you were little, you've done mm -hmm. seances. What you have a a, a vast of of di different stories to share that you could share with us tonight. What are some of the ones that come out? Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I again, I used to keep it very separate, my this world. I mean, I was practicing pagan. Again, I would talk to dead people, I danced bonfires, but I also ran a very corporate production company, so I thought I kept them very separate. And again, in, in the uh, maybe the early 2000s, um, the corporate entertainment market started to take a dive. I would produce shows, and reality television started to take an upswing. And I remember the first time somebody had asked me to do a seance on a like a home makeover show, and I'm like, well, sure, who, who watches oh, this on okay. TNT? <laughs> and, um, and thus it Again, it began again, and I remember my first carpet client who said, oh, I saw you on TV, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I'll never work for, you know, Bank of America or <laughs> IBM. And she said, I didn't know you were into the paranormal. I didn't know this. I, I love the paranormal. So it didn't hurt my corporate business, but that's, again, but my passion came this world, and once out of the closet or and out of the broom closet and out of the medium closet, everything just flipped around. So, you know, being in Hollywood and television and things have always been a part of my life. I've, I've, got, I've got to really move into that. With it. So it's been really lucky. I've got some great opportunities to work with some amazing people. I don't, I don't mean just celebrities. and politicians. Right, right. Just in general. I mean, you're, you, oh, were, yeah. you were called to do it in, in faith, I would say, right? Yes, I would say it was fate to do it. So, yes. Um, yes, I've, you know, I, and again, my specialty, besides, I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, like I'm sh sure you do, and my seances are one of my specialties, clearings, because I, the way I move energy and the, my, 
my kind of shamanistic practice, I would clear everything from the tiny little, you know, single apartment to literally the largest, most famous, most information, infamous houses in Los Angeles and around the world to either get the ghost of somebody famous out or to <laughs> figure out who killed them or to just clear the the messed up energy within it. I mean, I mean, this week alone, this stuff I can't talk about. Some of the good stuff, but it's been pretty exciting. You can't um, talk I've about had, it. You, well, I can't it? talk about some of this. I talk a lot, a lot of it. Like, okay. <laughs> um, one house that's for sale right now. This was the first time. Um, it, it was a, a pretty. This is the first time I've ever had spontaneous combustion. Okay. Person literally bursting into flames at a seance. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, how, um, how did that? Yeah. You mean you sitting there? You doing the seance and they? Combusted in the flames? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. It started out, it was, okay, it was a house built by Charlie Chaplin for Mary Astor, for his mm-hmm. lover, Mary Astor. She was a silent film star, too. But it was always a big party house. And the guy who owned uh, Rolling Stone Records uh, bought it. So Rolling Stones lived there, Mamas and Papa, Graham Parsons, the, then the person who invented the real life sex doll. Then Marilyn Manson, this is in my neighborhood, by the way, Marilyn Manson moved in and recorded there. And the house got a little too scary for him, for (laughs) Marilyn Manson. Um, So anyway, I was doing a documentary there. So we were filming it for a documentary on the house. And I explained to people that, okay, you could be a little skeptical, try to be open, to keep it open. But but believe or don't believe that you have to be respectful. You have to, because it's real whether you believe it or not. And this one kid, they were pretty young people. this beautiful old 1920s hope looked like a haunted house. Um, he was being a little smart alecky. Okay. So first kind mm-hmm. of cool thing, the ghost spirit wasn't demonic, but it was a real cranky big spirit. It was like making points. Like the fr- French doors would fly open on a, a very specific point. And like the producer side of me is going, wow, this is like special effects. But it wasn't. <laughs> and then that happened again. And then the speakers on the floor came on <sighs> like white noise to make a point. We look later, they weren't even plugged in. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but the guy continued to get really kind of assy, excuse my language. Oh, we were working with a Ouija board, working with a spirit board, and then all of a sudden we were getting kind of some dark stuff that had happened in, in the late 20s, early 30s. And my cameraman, beautiful, dear friend, um, who was pointing the camera right at this kid, literally burst into flames, like in a V up his back, like angel wings of fire up his back. Everybody starts screaming out of a four-camera shoot. Two of the cameras actually caught it and followed it. Two cameras, like, hit the ceiling or hit the floor. I I guess you test the metal of a cameraman by (laughs) the room (laughs) bursting into flames. So all of a sudden, cool, you know, which medium patty becomes a medic patty, of which I am as well. I'm an EMT. It's like, drop and roll, and I'm calling in my guardians and my guides and the way, my, how my protections they're shutting it down i'm shutting it down we are done his shirt burned off him like it was a synthetic polyester something it was cotton Mm. it should not have went woof like that and i saw some blistering i'm like we are done seance is done he's like but uh, but somehow the cameraman was very inspired by this (laughs) i'm like (laughs) uh, he goes like no no i have a sweater i could take this shirt off i'm okay um he, again, he was inspired, and the kid got really, really well behaved. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so he just well needed behaved. a little. <laughs> yeah, he just a little, you know. So anyway, I talked to the spirit, let him know we weren't even getting rid of any ghosts like I usually would. That this was just to communicate. So we finished it. We got some great stuff. Though they did try to push my cameraman off the cliff <laughs> later oh. that night. But still, but the most interesting and, again, confirming cool thing to me was um, he showed me about three weeks later, he goes, look at my back, where he had gotten the blistering. Uh, it was literally on the small of his back where his, he caught fire for mm-hmm. whatever reason, like kind of like just above like your, where your kundalini energy would go up, your right. spinal cord. Um, it, the blistering had literally turned into uh, like a scar that looked like he had got a tattoo. It, it looked like a dragon. I work dragon. Literally, the open mouth, the teeth, into the, the winged, uh, down the back, into the shape of a serpent. It was so awesome. Ooh. Um, yeah, so I think. That, that is my clicking. Should I hold on first? I'm not going to answer it. I don't know what that is. I heard, yeah, I heard something. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully they're gone. Okay, are, so are I will we continue. Okay, okay. I, okay, no. 
another line. Great. <laughs> Sorry, I have too many phones. All right. So anyway, so it was amazing because that is exactly when I was shutting down the seance, exactly who I was calling in. I was calling in my dragons from each of the four corners. And now he's got a little like tramp stamp tattoo on the small of his back. <laughs> oh, man. He, he was actually so inspired by it. He ended up writing a script, a film, like a horror film, kind of with Stephen Norrington, the mm-hmm. guy from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Blade series, um, that uh, they wrote it kind of about a psychic who did a lot of television, kind of did, here's another reality show, and then opened up a portal and turned it, <laughs> then turned it into a horror film. So, but I did sit down with him literally like five hours going, cannot say that in the script, because then it'll become a curse script. Those are real words. Those can't be used. Let me give you some makeup words, because we don't want it to turn into one of those scripts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so no. Was great. They haven't done it yet, but I hope they do. Oh, oh, so, so yeah, that was one of my, uh, yeah, that film hasn't been done yet, but I mean, we have the footage and everything from the the other film, so that was pretty wild. I mean, you, I'm actually married to a drummer, and I like the whole movie Spinal Tap, and they always talk about drummers spontaneously combusting, but it wasn't my <laughs> drummer husband that was <laughs> my poor French-Canadian cameraman instead. <laughs> <laughs> the poor cameraman, or we don't want nobody to get up in flames, right? So. Yeah, no, no, but all is well. Again, it turned out to be a creative moment, and uh, all is well. And actually, that house is for sale right now, if anybody's interested. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, I'll buy it. (laughs) (laughs) It is for sale. It's a 1920s house. It's on three lots. It's a complete fixer-upper, and it's only $2 million. That's all. Okay, uh, let me open (laughs) my pity bank and count the pennies. Yeah, open your pity bank and see. You know, it might need a little clearing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so let's see, two million plus the clearance cost, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and plus probably a whole lot of plumbing and stuff. These old houses, and I live in like right under the Hollywood sign, one of those oldest neighbors. Where my house is nineteen twenty, but we renovated, so you know if it probably needs foundation, plumbing, heating. But it, it will you'll never get bored living in this old Mary Astor Rolling Stone Marilyn Mont- Manson house. <laughs> I believe that. You know, and, and when you go into these old homes, don't you mm-hmm. feel a ton of oh, en- yeah. energy? I do. Uh, yeah, it's it's I do yes, old homes of course because people live there, their lives mm-hmm. were there, I mean, and the walls do talk. I mean, everybody says that the walls can talk. It's like they do, <laughs> <laughs> they really do. And I think not just people like you, people like me can sense it. People, people stop and listen. You can, you can hear it. The spaces really, you know, and furniture. I even when I walk into an antique store, it, you start getting. I mean, that's a little more chaotic because they came from every which place, but I love it. Well, to be totally honest, I can't walk into a museum or an antique store. It bothers me too much. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. See, I like it. (laughs) (laughs) A graveyard, I'm fine. And I take pictures of a lot of spirits. Um, Graveyards, I'm fine. I wonder if the energy is different in an antique shop or a museum compared to... I don't, well, let me, let's see. I've never thought about that. Gra- uh, well, with a graveyard, people have been somehow in some put to rest. They, you know, they have been there. They're either interned or they've had a funeral. I've had some kind. So that's where an antique store, who's to say what kind of chaos is in that vase or that couch or that chair? Mm-hmm. You know, family could have fought about it over whoever is dead. And <laughs> too many connections. Less settled. <laughs> and too many connections, yeah. So there is some sort of finality, I would say, at a graveyard. Maybe that's why it, it's not as chaotic. Maybe, yeah, because the in, in energy, and I'm sure we both feel that in the sense you have thousands of connections with each person it just adds on and on then you have the spiritual energy you have the the uh the realm in which they're in that type of in energy so you have layers of different types of yeah it's just (laughs) (laughs) mind-boggling Yes, it does. Every day my mind is boggled. I love it, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> who's... Another mind-boggling moment. <laughs> uh, now, who? what are some of the films that you have worked on besides uh, the one you just told us about? Uh, oh, well, as far as... I do more television than film. Okay. I do um, probably Ghost Adventures on Travel Channel more than anybody else, which is really great. I'm actually flying off tomorrow to shoot another episode um, 
Zach Bagans and his crew have been really good to me the last four years or so, I think. So, um, and he's really respectful of those who we do. And they are good. really legit. I know a lot of people, like, like, is reality really real? Yeah. I mean, they will literally, they will keep me sequestered in a van, in a room, to not know what I'm going into. It's just, and, and blindfold me if needed. They will say, you just tell us what happened. You just go in there. You just tell us what you feel, what happened. Or if I go into a seance or I just, oh, just go down into the basement. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. You know, and then you're in a serial killer house. Uh, yeah. That's, so, um, the energy is quite, quite di- different, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. It. Yeah. It's some of the darkest place. Um, like, Again, that Marilyn Manson house is pretty dark. The last time I went in it, it had lightened up some for whatever reason. I think one of the darkest houses is the um, the Souden house, which is right here in Los Angeles, too. Okay. It's where the Black Dahlia murders were. Mm-hmm. Can that you tell us is, a little bit about that? Yes. I have um, that... I have been there a couple of times, actually a couple different TV shows. The first one (laughs) was not a paranormal TV show. It was more like a real estate TV show. Oh, cool. But they were having me do a seance, but they did not. You know, they did not know our world, the paranormal world. They did not know cameras were going to drain immediately. They didn't ha- hadn't developed their intuition about such things. Even where they set up what the, the food, what's called crafty or craft service, they set it up in the basement where these murders had all taken place. And I'm like, doesn't anybody feel this? This is like the worst place to set up the M&Ms and carrot sticks. <laughs> really? Um, but I, I did a, a, it just it was, literally I I'd walked upstairs at that house and something threw me into the wall, just into an art piece. I'm like, oh god, I don't want to break with this beautiful, probably priceless art piece, but just threw me into a wall. And we did a séance, and there was these tortured girls there. Um, it was so interesting because it, everybody knows this doctor really did it, even in there's it'll always be an unsolved case because he was just too politically connected and this famous doctor and he Mm -hmm. hung out with these famous people. But he definitely, there was spirits of three girls that were stuck there. Um, And even it was his son, Steve Hodel, who figured out it was his, after he was a policeman, figured out his father was this serial killer and had killed all these women and spent his career doing it. Um, I was befriended by the granddaughter and possible daughter, because there was incest there, of this killer, too, and we became good friends. And then I got called in by Ghost Adventures to when they were shooting there, too, so I got to go investigate it again, and I got to do another seance and get to know her. Um, Again, just, you would, I would say anybody, even the least aware person would walk into that house go this is one of the most beautiful homes i've ever seen it's designed by lloyd wright frank lloyd wright's son it's done like a mayan castle but who could live there no one can live there they film there a lot i think it's it's just sold or it's been for sale um but i kept going this needs to be cleared um but her mother actually passed right after we shot there because she was waiting for us to cross over a girl. And we actually did cross over a girl, and her mother was able to pass. And then sadly, my friend Fauna just passed this past year. And just when a whole TV, uh, the series by Patty Jenkins came out about her life, we would used to sit here and talk at my dining room table. We used to talk about uh, this this film that was going to be done on her life, and sadly, yes. you know fate took her way too soon and it's huge she was waiting for the director to finish this little film called wonder woman patty jenkins like the most famous now female director um but she's done beautiful with the series i've been watching it um it's it's all about this beautiful girl it's amazing in in that house that you just i mean the three women that you talked about sex did come up and they were very uh, what what I'm fe- feeling about these three girls is they 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 were very uh, flirtatious as well. Is that correct? Right. I think some of the girls why that were never solved. Um, the the main girl, the Black Dahlia girl, she was like a want to be actress or a, you know a, a struggling actress, and she might have been a little flirtatious kind of a girl mm-hmm. party girl. But the other girls, some of the girls that were missing, they were like. 
like girls of the evening, prostitute girls. Um, so they just sadly weren't as important to the police and things when that's they were sad. Missing. Yeah, that's not this right. Is way sad. No, not right. Every life is a life. Yes. And this, and they knew it had to be done by a surgeon. They were they were surgically cut up and body parts put inside other body parts. And the way her her body was found was like cut in half and almost done like an art piece because Dr. Hodel um, hung out with a famous artist, Man Ray, at the time. And whether Fauna believed to her death, and I could say to her death, that right. they were part of some really dark cult and doing really dark and evil Satanic things. Satanic cult, the women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's sick. Yes, yes. And, and I felt it, that the skin burning, they must have tortured their skin. When I was down in the basement, the, the pain that I felt just residual off of them and the terror they felt that you know that just I, I I can't get out of this whether they were tied up or what I'm sure they were restrained I felt I'm sure yeah. they were held yeah. I don't even want to it just gives me a chill when you talk about it it's very yeah yeah just I mean unmet un mad mad imaginable in some cake cases yeah it's completely. just and, yeah and how people can do that i mean there is some very flawed humans i mean we're all very flawed we all have our little idiots. yeah but not to the not to that extent evil in some, <laughs> yeah no no some of us you know we say stupid things we don't go <laughs> guilt people and torture people no no <laughs> i don't want to or uh, yeah no why don't we give everybody your website then and um, okay, please find me, follow me. It's pattynegri.com, P-A-T-T-I-N-E-G-R-I. Um, sign up for my newsletter because I send, like, monthly things with, I don't even sell anything. It's just little magical things to make your life a little bit better. Um, I'm, of course, on all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I do a lot of things, like, where you people can get, free readings and sessions and stuff on shows so it's good it's yeah please come find me follow me watch me on tv <laughs> that's great look looking forward to that that would be Thanks. how do you feel about working on the set i mean one moment you're you know you're doing uh the the ghost and and the haunt haunt hauntings and now you're working on the set do you feel a lot of spirits when you or or is it kind of dead and they make things up more or what's the story no they, that show I've, I've never worked a show that will make things up and i know okay. they're probably out there i can't speak for them but like i said because even before i started working on ghost adventures i would watch the show going what is this because it seems so big oh who's these big macho guys and tight t-shirts who run like a little girl with a pitch <laughs> but it's because they're committed they're 120 percent legit and committed good like i said they will keep me locked in a closet practically to not know what's going on they want my real stuff they are testing me with every turn of the corner because they want it real so that's great we never know what it's going to be when i just show up and go in and whatever it's going to be. Don't know if we're going to do a seance, not do a seance, just an investigation, do mediumship, not do mediumship. Um, other shows I've worked, again, when I get into the, I love working the non-paranormal show and kind of some of the realities like Nick working with um, Nicole Ritchie or the Bad Girls Club or Jeff Lewis on his flipping out shows where they're a little more light and goofy, but I still get to bring my magic in and my awareness of, okay, this is how you clear a house when girls are fighting or you want to flip it. or what. So I love getting to actually give people in a fun, light and entertaining way, real solid information. So I just I love it. I love the whole genre of this kind of reality. I don't. I've never done the like the, you know, the housewives kind of. Let's go mm -hmm. to the darkest end of whatever. Show how <laughs> silly humans we are. But I like the ones that get funny and light, and I get to a whole new audience I would never get to, and 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 that's really fun. And my other thing that I think is <laughs> my hobby. Love it. Love is, it. <laughs> it, it. My hobby is getting on shows that I shouldn't get on. <laughs> what are you? Okay, like, this I got to hear about. Okay, not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I, I remember this was a challenge. This was my like midlife challenge to me. I, I had had some health problems, like you said, when you were young. I had some health problems too, and I was told at thirty that if I made fifty, I was gonna, you know, if I wasn't dead from a cancer, I'd be in a wheelchair from fractures and bones. And I kind of went, huh, no. 
No, nope, I believe in magic. I believe we humans are powerful. So at 50, instead of being dead or in a wheelchair, I tried out for the world for that TV show Wipeout. This was several years right. ago, the world's right. biggest obstacle course. <laughs> and literally, I had, they said, like, 400,000 people try out. You're one of a little handful who make it. And you have to go through psychology, psychological testing, and physical testing, and physicals. It was the scariest, hardest thing I have ever done. Because then you get there, and I went, oh, yeah, I'm afraid of heights, and I have to, like, fall 700 feet into burning ice water. Oh, my God. But, again, once I didn't run screaming like a little girl myself, it was the most (laughs) empowering thing I did. For, like, at least six months, I went, if I could do that, I can do anything. You're brave. You're strong. So I figured, okay, I did that. I did the physical thing. So I think the, the next year I'm like, Okay, what do I not do? Well, I'm a really sucky cook. I'm not talk to my husband. I can hardly boil water. And I go, but I'm a really good witch. So I'm going to try out for Master Chef with Gordon Ramsay. I love Gordon Ramsay. I think he's a big pussy cat. So again, I tried it out and I can't, and I did I played the whole witch and medium card. So but I wanted to get a real message, so I talked about magical cooking. How how besides all the technique and the art that goes with cooking that it's magical that, you know, stirring a certain direction using certain herbs, using certain, mm-hmm. putting intent into things. So I just kept passing on. And, I, and for months, I, the auditions go on, and I'm like, any second they are going to figure me out. But I made it. Again, I made seven, I beat 70,000 people to get on MasterChef. <laughs> and now, so now I'm going into the MasterChef kitchen going, oh, my God, what am I doing? This is so <laughs> scary. This is scarier than Wipeout was. <laughs> <laughs> because is, you're, you're facing your up. fears, right? Facing, I love to face my fears. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I did not last on the show very long because they did figure me out, but I made it. So, so I think the next, the two years after that, then my last thing I did was, um, what show am I totally not suited for? Okay. Because um, got talent. I'm totally, because I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I mean, I used to actually be a dancer, but I don't sing. I am never, never have been the caliber of those people. Right. So I thought I would go on as a psychic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, yes. And they kept testing me with, with Howie Mandel. They wanted to bring in an aspect of relating to the judges. So I kept reading, you know, dogs and Howie Mandel's at show. So I got there and again, I knew this was going to be, uh, you know, a, a big cluster mess. Right, right. <laughs> so, but I made it. Again, I beat another 70,000, 80,000 people to make it on AGT. And we're at the Dolby Theater. The the big, beautiful, where they do Academy Awards and they're backstage, and they're going, okay, Patty, well, when you go on stage, uh, make sure you get Howie Mandel on stage with you. I'm like, okay, they're going <laughs> to wait for catastrophe. You're like, okay, when you get Howie Mandel on stage with you, make sure you get Howie Mandel, to, to, that you get down to the dog's level so you can relate. Okay. Make sure you get Howie Mandel down at the dog's level with you on the floor of the stage of the Dolby Kodak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I go out there and I'm a psychic and we're okay. doing and the audience is not sure how to react to me and there's, you know, Mel B, all these famous people, Howie Mandel. They bring out Howie's not the little dog they've been showing me, his little chihuahua dog, but his son's big bull boxer dog who comes running out and of course I do follow direction, I get Howie on stage, and the dog, of course, knocks him over, knocks me over. So there the three of us are all tangled in a dog leash, laughing, screaming. I'm trying to (laughs) actually do my work, tell him what the what the dog is i'm like it's a cockfight it's a cockfight stop this male thing it's you and the dog and i'm it was it was i'm trying to help up howie mandel but you can't touch howie mandel he's got that germ thing you know yep. that's the one who invented the fist bump so it's like <laughs> reach for him don't reach for him it, it was like the funniest funnest moment <laughs> of my life i i didn't win that show i <laughs> never <laughs> To, and that's got to go to a really good magician or singer or dancer. But um, I think that's, you know, some people like to go mountain climbing or surfing or take up skiing. I gave up all the skiing. I just like to challenge myself in really insane ways. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, you don't, your life is not boring and you get to live life. A lot of people yes, don't get I, that chance. Yes, and and that's what I preach to people, live life. You don't have to be, you know, insane like me to do things, but <laughs> embrace your life. I look at people every day, and again, this I'm more of a coach than anything else. You know, don't go through life 
you know, asleep at the wheel, by road, automatic pilot, phoned in. You're, it's, it's passing you by those minutes, those hours, that time. You know, wake up, wake up. Life is what we make it every minute, every day. Even for the people that are sick and can't do too much, they can still find something for their mind oh, to stay bu- completely. And that's where our world comes in. You, I mean, yes, it's great to have a physical body, and and and, and yes, I believe free will over fate. And I'm I'm a witch, I'm a magician, so I believe we can change fate, and I cho- I choose to every day. But we can't always. Correct. But we always can choose how we deal with it. My best example is that guy on. He's a YouTube guy. I wish I could think of his name. He was born, he's a guy born without arms or legs. He okay. could have been a miserable victim his whole life. Poor mm-hmm. guy. He's got a head and a, a torso. That's it. He could have spent his life, poor me, you know, as a vegetable or watching TV. Instead, he is this motivational speaker that goes out and speaks to 50,000 people and brings them joy. And he has a life. It's what you do with what you're given. And, exactly. And exactly. What I try to, it's what you're doing. Yes, we weren't. Some of us were born with way different circumstances than other, but it's what we do with it, and that's where our magic lies. Everybody. So maybe you have a serious health problem or an illness, or you can't. You, you know, we are we are amazing beings. Well, it's like uh, there's uh, Michael Berryman, who I've had on my show a few times. I love the guy, but he has a. A bad disfigurement on his face. Do you know who I mean? I don't. Okay, my, I'll have to look him up. Yeah, my, Michael Berryman is well known for The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, oh, he starred yeah. in that. He st- he played in Highway to Heaven. He was talking about how Michael Land- Landon was a practical joker on set. His dad was a famous neurosurgeon. Sur- Sur- surgeon and he wow. this, this is the funny little thing he told me I got to share with you if that's okay yes please okay Michael was telling me one time he came home with bad grades right and his dad told him well son he goes I got to figure out what's going on here he goes I'm going to look into your head and he met literally he took my, Michael oh. and had other doctors other surgeons look into his head to make sure the brain was okay wow and it was and then he said son your brain's fine i want you to do better in school <laughs> so I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I love that story it, i love that <laughs> <laughs> and it's i mean how okay patty how did you meet your boy- boyfriend what inspired you guys what how, how did my you husband, guys... he's my husband now. Oh, your um, husband, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, no. I met him at one of my favorite places, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel here in Hollywood. Um, besides that, it's a beautifully haunted hotel. <laughs> I just have history there. I used to I used to do a w- weekly show in the Cinegrill. I've done big New Year's Eve events with my old production company. You know, and now I can say I met my husband there. We, we were at an award. I was with my then production company partners, and I was with actually someone else. And um, But it wasn't that serious, and it wasn't right. going that well. And we sat down next to each other, and it was like, oh, my, I felt it completely. <laughs> um, and so did he. So I was with this other person. He kept going, you're talking to that guy. Yes, I am. Yes. I, you know, <laughs> where are, are you going to give him your card? Yes, I think I am. <laughs> are you going to go out with my, I hope so. <laughs> so my poor husband, Carrie, um, he had to, the first day, the guy came and, like, broke down my apartment door. <laughs> oh, he, he, he had to go through a test of fire. But he passed, and he's a beautiful drummer, and we have created a beautiful life for ourselves. We're really, God, the universe put us together. We're these two. Well, congratulations on that, to yeah. begin with. Yes. So, um, you know, where our opposite sides are very opposite. Our same sides are very the same. I looked at our homes when we first met. And it's like the same, only his was filled with, with drums and antiques of one sort. Mine were turned with dolls and occult supplies of another sort. And it's like, oh, would these all look good together? So now we have shelves of antique drums and Barbies and haunted dolls and beautiful antiques everywhere. <laughs> It's cool because you guys, yeah, despite he's different and you're 
different, which in my case, my girlfriend, same way. But but you guys have found that magic that a lot yeah. of people, yeah, to make things, you, what I feel from you, and if I could go ahead and say it, if it's all oh, right please, with you. Please, okay. you're psychic out here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell that your love life is very full. It's like you, you're still romantic. It has never changed. It's, it's, no. I could feel that about you guys, and that's special. Thank uh, you. You don't have no. that. Yeah, you're very, you're both of you are very open. It took a while to get there, like you said, but you both trust each other very much. Yeah, yeah, and we're both very goofy Hollywood people. He was actually <laughs> filming on a TV show all day yesterday. His drumming, his thing, he's not into the, the, the paranormal world like I am. Right. He, gets it. he puts up with a lot. It's like, you can't come upstairs all night because, you know, there's a seance in the dining room. Don't come upstairs. <laughs> but, you know, he's got his man cave and his whole drum room and recording room downstairs, so it's good. <laughs> so we both put up with each other's idiosyncrasies, and it's, it's really fabulous. You make it work, exactly. We and do. We you make don't really it have to make, make it. It's just there, but there's always a commitment that you have with, with each other that's un, un, underlined, and that's that's what make, makes it so special. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy for you guys, for both of you. That, you. That's real cool, yes. And uh, why don't we give your website again so people can... Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's Patty dot com. P a t t i n e g r i dot com. There you will find my witches brew newsletters with all sorts of just free things for you to do on your own. You will find a lot of my videos, a few clips from TV shows, but sadly you have to take most of those down because of copyright laws. You put something up and they take it down. Yep. A few things are up there, but I have my own little Hollywood Boulevard where I teach people to do things. My YouTube video. So there's. More than you'd ever want to know about me, right at pattynegri.com, plus links to all my social media. So, yes, thank you. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You're listening to the Richard Spassoff Show with Patty Negri. Patty... Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, thank you, jeez. Perfect. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you, it, it, sometimes with people's names, you may have to say it a thousand times. Are you that way or no? Is it just yes, me? Yes, I am. The, I am. Well, you know, it's not about the pronunciation. It's just remembering them. Yeah. I'm really bad. I mean, I'll, I'll be like three people in a row and go, do you remember any of their names? And I try. It's not like, you know, because all the tips and tricks they give you because you're worried about thinking about your name, all the stuff, and you try to relate it to somebody. It's just my brain is so full. It's very bad. I think we should go through life wearing a little hello, my name is sticker every day. <laughs> I <know>. Everybody. <laughs> or a neon yeah. sign. Just be under a neon sign and go look up. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And plus, it's so funny because I, though I really do t turn off my gifts, I don't want to be like Long Island Medium, and I don't even think it's ethically right. Because she's a TV show. She's fine because they know she's there because there's a whole crew. But I don't want to be in the grocery store going, your mother wants to talk to you. Because that's not <laughs> yeah. my business unless somebody <laughs> asks about their mother. But I see energy so much. I, I'm, I'm so often looking at energy more to the face. I've, like, ran into people that I've literally been married to and not recognized them. <laughs> not my current husband, but a former one just like, Huh, you look so familiar to me. Is voice <laughs> familiar? Where do I know you from? And it's like five minutes in. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I <laughs> married you. Oh, I married you. Damn. Now I know who you are. No? Um, uh, should have recognized that. Because <laughs> I just, I mean, I just go through so many layers in. It's so funny. It, yeah, life can be, but, but, but. I think me and you both, we look at people's souls first. Yeah. Rather yeah. than the outer side. Yeah, when I look look, look at somebody, and, okay, they, 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 a woman, for example, they can be very 
gorgeous on the outside, but maybe not have a good soul. And it yeah. just turns me off. I have to turn around. But then on the other hand, a lot of people, too, have good souls. So yeah. it, it, that's, how I, that's how my brain works. I see energy as well. Yeah, that's how I think the same with me. So my ex had just obviously changed his soul a lot. I don't know. He looked good. <laughs> but it was like, oh. So, yeah, our little human brains. I, I would, I would might be scared if somebody would look into mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I, I was born with a speech impediment. So I think I'm doing per- pretty good today. And I was born with I asthma, colitis, and... And when I was little, all the time from between, and it wasn't because of the plants, but between four years old <laughs> and probably till about 12 years old, I always talked to God, and he a- answered back to me all the time because I was in so much pain. But wow. I wasn't alone. I was very blessed in that way. I had two, my mom and my dad, I had a, since I had a speech and hearing problem, I also had a pro- problem with my my balance, right? Mm-hmm. And the doctor said you'd never be able to ride a bike or do anything. So time went by, and my dad took six months to be patient with me and my mom to have me on that bike and to learn how to do it. They didn't take no for an answer. Isn't that beautiful? It is, it is. And, and I had the kind of father, father I mean... Is it all right to tell you a short story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. My, <laughs> thank you. My dad, uh, he is uh, 86 today. But besides that, wow. when I was young, I remember him going to our house in Northridge. And he rented us out to like a hip hippie couple, okay? And we didn't know they were drug, that they were drug de- dealers. And turn out, went to the house, me and my mom and him, knocked on the door, and they had a gun to his head. I was about maybe oh. six years old, yeah, or somewhere around there. And they had a gun to his head, but my dad still had a smile on his face. He had the the uh, charisma to keep people, uh, that, that connection with pe- people, to calm them down. Right. And, I, and you right. had the same thing. I feel you had the same gift. Uh, same with me. And when you deal with pe- pe- people like that, it's not fun. But uh, if you keep your head together, you, you come out of it safe. Yeah. Yeah. And again, whatever issues you had, everything we were talking about before, that made you who you are now. They stuck with you, the bicycle. Yes. You, you, look at you, speak for a living. <laughs> Thanks. How great this yeah, is. How great this is. You do comedy, you're a medium, all that is the magic. Uh, but the last year, I'm not going to give up, though, but the la- last year, I went to Louisiana, got stuck in a flood, lost everything, and then my lungs got bad, but they're getting better. I'm working on it holistically and spiritually, so I'm getting better. Good, good. You're yeah. going to get better. Yes, I am. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> quick and easy, quick and easy. Yes. Decide it's going to be quick and easy. I like that idea. Now, before we, we let's see what time. We're okay. Still one. Do you have another paranormal story you could share with us before we get off here? Or? Um, let's see. Um, take your time. I, I, I mean, probably have. Yeah, that's right. Because you can stop and start as we go. Yeah. Paranormal <laughs> story. Oh yeah, this is a really fun one. Okay. This okay. Was, good. Good. This, this is a, a fun one. Not not as. Uh, not as interesting, scary one. Okay, you know, because doing what we do, how we and been me knowing doing seances a lot. I got called by these kids a couple of years ago, and it was around Halloween when, of course, you're going to do lots of seances. And I thought, okay, they just want to experience the other side. So I show up to Northridge because that's why I thought of it to Northridge. <laughs> um, and I thought it was going to be a handful of kids around a table, and it was forty kids and all their professors from Northridge College. And it was like this thing, and I'm like, oh, oh, this isn't just let's do kids by Halloween and see if we can talk. This is like whether it was a psychology department or a philosophy department. This is let's, ooh, should we test the crazy lady thing or let's <laughs> see what this is? 
And so I walked into this beautiful little, you know, val- typical valley, lovely ranch house I've never been to, and these 40 kids and their professors. But again, don't you realize that people at that young age, anywhere between 17 and 21, have so much life force that always paranormal stuff will happen? I just, every time, like even the crazy fire yes. stuff was with young people. Yes. It's just so much life force. Maybe just it hasn't worn down yet. <laughs> young people. So here I was with the whole, you know, almost 40 people of that age range, you know, 18 year olds or so. Um, and all of a sudden, these orbs started flying. And it was like, it was so cute. It was like watching 40 people in a high vaulted ceiling living room in a little ranch valley house. 40 people out once, almost like they were watching a tennis game. They would all look left, then look right, then look, and then, whoa, oh, eh. like watching a tennis game. It was so cute. And and then the, the messages started coming, so I started giving all these messages. Some of them maybe it's like, oh, how did she know that, that so-and-so just did this with so-and-so mm-hmm. and so-and-so? Um, but it was so magical from, you know, coming in, I saw the skeptic-y, skeptic the teachers, to these people saying, wow, maybe there is something out there. Maybe it, it isn't all bad and it isn't all scary. Maybe energy is energy. Maybe there is an afterlife. Maybe there is a beyond. So all of a sudden, by the end of this, there's 40 people practically crawling on me. Well, who is this? Can you talk to my grandma? This? Bop, 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 bop. So how I took what could have been a potentially disastrous, or had I taken the wrong attitude going, all right, what are you guys out here to do? And I just went, mm, no, okay, let's, you know, show them some magic. Let's, yes, let them be skeptics. Let them be this. And so it was kind of really a magical moment there. That, that's cool, though. I mean, I, I remember one time I went to a bar. I was doing a job to do read, readings for people at the bar. It was like mm-hmm. a dive yep. bar, right? Yep. And I was scared to death, but I still went in there with my friend, uh, she was a psychic psychic medium as well, and one of the guys uh, that was in the bar put a knife up to me, and Gee. yeah, he said uh, he just was a little drunk and was talking, right? And something made me say to him that your wife is girlfriend, somebody is preg pregnant, pregnant, and he he he. Put the knife down and started to cry, like like what you 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 were saying. It's it was yeah. It, Again, you turn you take a situation and you turn it to what you can. So you know you brought out humanity in them, and you didn't get cut. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, get cut or make them cry. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, we do um, get put into some interesting situations. Very uh, much, yeah, and 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 being. In the spirit work, you you get thrown into that a lot. I I could tell. Yes, so. uh, yes, you and you do. And when you said like when you said the drugs, the, the thing to me that whether it's with the the TV show or any other TV, when there's serious addiction problems, drug, alcohol, that's when the dark stuff gets in. Yes, that um, I've done a few episodes that I've brought them to, like the Reseda House, that has such a history of drug use. The darkness was so thick i just i even told the guy i can't clear this house i've never seen the place that it just comes right back scary it, yeah that, yeah that, it was that, the, yeah. the serious addiction problem really brings in some dark dark stuff um and you're right and those party readings are funny too <laughs> <laughs> i know because, i know because we're we're serious yes we understand that we're going to go and do fun readings at parties we're not going to go serious but these people it's still this real gift we have, and they're all drinking at their company party, and so it's just, it's very interesting. Well, the, <laughs> okay. the, exactly. The, now, the company par- parties, I never had any problems with, but I go in the roughest bars sometimes, and <laughs> put on the shows, and, and, and like you, that's my entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, exactly our challenge of life let's get through this <laughs> and along with trying to pronounce your name patty negri 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 you just you just make it a little prettier than it is okay. negri like an egg i got an egg in my hand i'm gonna neg i know negri, negri. Thank you. But you go negri, which this is pretty. Maybe I should switch it to that. People always, my whole life, I've had trouble with my name. And then I'll wind but up I saying like it, it anyway. the right way. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, it's funny. So, no, any way you want to say it is fine with Thank me. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, one more quick question for you. With all the yeah. different TV stars you worked with, who was your favorite one and why? Um, okay. I think, and this isn't even in my psychic realm. It's okay. okay. But when I meet people who are jump because some of that I, I do keep really, I, I sign more pages of non-disclosure agreements. But just in the Hollywood world, working, performing, the people that I've met that were the most amazing gentlemen were going way back, I'm dating myself, mm-hmm. is Ricardo Montalban on Fantasy Island. Oh, wow, okay. I was the lowest level. This was, I was a new baby in Hollywood, and I was a lava lava <laughs> girl on the show. The girls who ran around in the little bikinis and giggled mm-hmm. and put lays on people when they got off the plane and handed uh, Mr. Rourke his champagne bottle. And again, we, we were the low regulars on the totem pole, but the respect that he had, he would always remember my name, Aww. the name of my dog, and made you feel comfortable. And I've never worked with such a gentleman in my life. And the other one was Martin Sheen. Oh, great. Same Good. thing, yes. I worked with him on, and this was back in the 80s, again, right. in the late 80s, right. on, they did a remake of um, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. They okay. brought back the, the 60 show into the, the late 80s, I guess. And it was one, and it was all these celebrities. Burt Reynolds directed it. I was scared to death. <laughs> I had a small role. It was with uh, Parker Stevenson, Martin Sheen, Robbie P. all these names. It was like a... And, and me. I was so scared. Um, Bert was really nice. They were all really nice. But Martin Sheen took me by the hand, looked in my eyes. He goes, he goes, this doesn't even matter. He goes, this is acting. This is we're playing make believe. This is mm-hmm. this. And he relaxed me so Aww. good with those beautiful eyes of his. And I know he's a very spiritual man. He's mm-hmm. a very religious man. And he, he just did everything to make me decide to enjoy Aww. this and, and be comfortable. So, when, I, when you see that again, just respect in that humanity in people. Yes, yes, it's and amazing. and very much so. There's a, there's people that I've worked with, like Wayne Newt, Newton, mm. that was like that. Very much of a gentleman. When I was doing an inter, interview with him, all the TV cam- cameras were there, and I'm not any any anybody per se. But it was a day. Last party they had the Stardust Hotel. Okay, I had dinner with wow. Don Rickles, uh, all all these people, Phyllis Dil- 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 Diller. But when I was in the room getting ready to do my interview with Wayne, uh, somebody cut in front of me. A pretty well, you know, a fa- famous guy. I don't want to say who it is, but <laughs> anyways, uh, he cut in front, and Wayne said, "Wait a minute, Richard was the first one here." And wow. um, that, that, that's what that's just like you said with Martin Sheen and and Ricard, Ricardo. Yeah. Yeah. You find good pe- people all over, over, over the place because yeah. we bring out good, I believe. Yeah, we bring out good and people are good um, and people don't fit into stereotypes like just because they're rich or famous mm-hmm. or it doesn't make them bad. You know, I say, yeah, sure. Some get jaded, some get whatever. But. Most don't. I mean, most people are pretty, pretty cool. Most humans. Well, again, I really appreciate you being here and sharing. You want to give your website one more time, and we'll close. Sure. And- <laughs> Please visit me. Sign up for my newsletter at pattynegri dot com. P a t t i n e g r i dot com. Follow me on social media. Friend me, like me. And thank you, Richard, for having me on your wonderful show. Oh, uh, thank you too, and everyone. God bless you, and thank you so much for. Having uh, Patty here today, I'm very thankful for that. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Richard Spazoff Show. For more episodes and information, join us online at psychicmediumspazoffshow.com or catch the show on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. The Richard Spazoff Show is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. For more great content and shows, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com or download our free HC Universal Network podcast app from your favorite device market. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And until next time, keep watch on the dark dark, 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 dark